Good morning, ladies and gents. Welcome. It's um, great to see a few of you coming online. Um, we're excited this morning for our Business IQ to interview Colin Anstey from Raging Digital. Many of you will have met Colin at our recent Canberra intensives. Um, Canberra, uh, sorry, Colin's you know, developing a really significant national reputation in the digital marketing space um, and has supported us and our clients over the last two years on all things social media. Um, a champion in the Facebook, LinkedIn and social media space. Um, we're really fortunate to have you on the call, Colin, today. Thanks so much for your time. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jen. So guys, what we're going to cover off on today, and we're going to interview Colin um, and focus specifically on LinkedIn. Um, I'm keen, Colin, perhaps to get a bit of history on LinkedIn, but it, it's only been with us in the business realm for a matter of minutes, really, and already it has massive reach and significant application um, for professionals and for business owners. And what I'm wanting to unpack with Cy, si, and Cy, si, great to have you on the call as well. Thanks for being with us, obviously. Um, yep. is, is how do we benefit from create value from and leverage our businesses using this incredible platform called LinkedIn as a small business owner. Um, and so as an entrepreneur regionally, how is it that we make the most of this new platform? Um, so Cole, again, thanks for joining us. Mate, would you mind kicking off, kicking off if we could, with, with a bit of context about where LinkedIn as a platform is at now and perhaps why we should consider it as a small business owner operating regionally. Yeah, absolutely. Look, LinkedIn has absolutely exploded. Um, so 2005, it really came of age. As a regional entrepreneur, the biggest value of LinkedIn by far is two things. So number one, it is the only professional social media platform or business to business social media platform and number two it is the biggest directory of professionals on the planet so it really has an amazing ability to be that great database um, of your potential prospects or target audience you might want to hit with your business uh, so that's where it's absolute value is and I'll just throw three numbers at you um, to finish on this answer is that uh, number one is that 82% of professionals in Australia, because most of your regional entrepreneurs are pretty focused on Australia, 82% um, are on LinkedIn, 67% are active, and that means more than three times a week, like checking it, using it, having a look at it. Um, and the third and final stat I wanted to throw at you is that the average salary or income of the people on LinkedIn is $109,000. Um, so it's you know sway well above the average. I think the national average is about fifty three thousand dollars in Australia at the moment. So um, so it really starts to give you a snapshot of the kind of audience that you've got there. Yeah, wonderful. And how long has it been around, Cole? And um, perhaps just uh, you're obviously consulting to big business and small business on this. Um, what are you seeing yeah. by way of its its level of utilisation um, amongst your sort of networks and clients now? Yeah, look, it, it is the, to be honest, out, out of all the things my organisation does, it is the number one thing I get calls about is LinkedIn training, LinkedIn assistance, link, LinkedIn marketing, and this kind of thing, and specifically what that means. And it, 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 it symbolises a huge shift in marketing because for so long it's always been about um, that company brand and that company logo and that tagline and the you know the hat you might wear or the shirt you might wear with the logo, but LinkedIn has really led that charge into personal brands, which is the Jeremy Hutchins brand instead of the Regional Entrepreneur Academy brand. And so, 
Um, and particularly in that business space, you know, you're, the business to business space, you're really buying from a human, not from a company, because you can't have a relationship with a company, not a real, you know, mammal-like relationship. So, and I think that's where the real shift has been. So, with some of these um, bigger clients I'm dealing with, it's a lot in that sales and marketing space, and also those individuals who really want to start to grow that celebrity or grow that kind of known expertise in a field or domain. So that's where LinkedIn's really making a big difference. And just the final point on that is that it is the one, so it is the one social media platform right now that is accountably driving revenue for businesses. And what I mean by revenue is definitely leads, definitely meetings, and signed contracts or, or transactions. So that's, mm. that's where it's really making a difference, yeah. I think to cut through, and ladies and gents, as we track through this, um, my prediction is that you'll have questions, so please type those into either the chat box or the questions box, and we'll um, put them through to Cole um, as part of the interview, and at the end of this, we'll open up so that if you've got questions that specifically relate to your business, you'll have the chance to fire them directly at Colin. Um, so that we can make sure you get real value from this. Um, to cut through, Cole, what is, I guess, probably at the forefront of everyone's mind as a small business owner with all of their competing priorities and different marketing avenues and channels is, is how do I, who's this for firstly? Is this relevant for me if I'm a builder or an architect or a physiotherapist um, versus an accountant or a lawyer? So that, that's probably, why what, you know, is this relevant for me? But the second one is how can I create value from this and how can I leverage this to drive sales? Um, and so I might hand over and, and let you sort of unpack those. I know you've got a bit of a presentation here for us. Unpack those in a bit of detail. Yeah, absolutely. Look, um, the, the first question is, is it relevant for me if I'm a builder or a lawyer or if I'm selling goods? Look, this is a really simple question for me um, and hopefully a very simple answer for each of you is that it is all about your target audience, so your ideal prospects. If they are a professional or a high net worth income person, so if you're, um, so if you are a lawyer and you're selling, um, you know, packages of wills or um, you're selling insurance or whatever it might be, um, you know, you're looking for high net worth or people at that higher end. Um, and if you're looking to sell to other businesses, the owners, the directors, the heads of marketing, the heads of HR, all of these executive type um, groups are on LinkedIn and so it's very much about your audience. And so for some organisations, so I met with a, an amazing gentleman this week, so Ben Vaughan from 42. Um, and so what he said is that, um, so he's really looking for institutions or organisations or other people to partner with. Um, and so LinkedIn is a perfect place for someone like Ben to go out um, and meet with universities, meet with educational institutions, meet with providers um, and actually identify them. And I'm going to talk through exactly how to, how to do this on LinkedIn. So I'm going to take you through a few of, a few of the parts of this. So, and it's really broken into just three parts. Um, and I'm just going to jump on. And so, look, part one, there's a, there's a good looking rooster there for you. So, I've just brought up Jeremy's uh, LinkedIn profile. So, part You're right, one Jim. of yeah. the. <laughs> so, look, part one is absolutely the build of a LinkedIn profile. So, making sure that, um, so um, you've got a nice. So definitely making sure you've got a nice photo is absolutely critical. Making sure you've got a nice headline, so in that blue box there, making sure that in that 120 characters on LinkedIn, you show the world exactly what it is you're good at, what you do, and what you're an expert at. Um, number three is making sure that you've got your contact details up to date, so if you do attract the prospects or leads you're after, make sure they can get in contact with you. Um, there's one spot in LinkedIn where you can actually op write an open letter to your target audience. So I always say to people, imagine you've got a hundred of your perfect prospects lined up at the door of the room you're in right now. And when I say perfect, these are the ones that um, that 
you can do projects you absolutely love with or, or do transactions with you you absolutely love, they pay on time, they don't complain, they're long-term customers and they're an absolute joy to work with. So you can be really selfish here and writing them a nice letter. So, um, and I've put a, a bit of a, an approach there of how you might do that, starting with their pain points, talking about your expertise, talking about the company you're with, um, and then finally your call to action. Um, I'd make sure, and so Ben, who I mentioned at some point to adventures uh, previous. Cole, yeah. can I just interrupt? That that um, descriptor, the, firstly the 100 word one and then that more detailed one, that's really important um, to get word perfect. Is that a fair observation? Uh, look, I, I, would, I would do my absolute best at this one. Um, it, it is one of the hardest things in the world to write about is yourself. And so most people I work with will write this many, many times and you can rewrite and refresh it a number of times. But I really think about my top five or top few clients I work with today or, or suppliers or whoever it might be I'm thinking of. Um, and I really imagine I'm talking to them and that's how I write it. So what would they want to know about? What are they interested in? What are they, are they thinking about what's happened in a year's time or in five years' time? That kind of thing. So yeah, so if you can get it word perfect, that's good. Um, but it's a very hard task. Would you recommend getting someone who's expert in this to help you write your profile? And secondly, Cole, would you be willing to share um, perhaps this screen grab and and those key points that you think are really important that people include in this? A absolutely. Look, this full slide pack is available just to to everybody, of course. Um, and yeah, look, and it's definitely something that my organisation assists with writing this. The real heart of this is actually deciding who that target audience is and what it is yeah. you want to offer to them. The, the writing of it is more of a, a, of a copywriting or a, uh, that kind of activity. So really knowing the heart of your organisation is pretty key here. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. And, and, yeah, so I'll keep going with the last couple. So, um, so I just started talking about number five. Um, so, I'd, and I mentioned Ben from Forty Two Adventures. So, under each of your roles or your current experience, but primarily your current role, be really clear um, to your prospects um, exactly what it is you do and what you can offer. So, I thought Ben had a really nice example there. Um, so, talking and so. Somebody who has no knowledge of you, no knowledge of your industry, is able to understand what it is you offer. Um, and then, look, just the, the final couple of um, final couple of ones I want to look at is um, number six is get skills and endorsements, so where people can do a one-click endorsement of the skills you've got. LinkedIn really quite likes these and will prioritise your profile if you've got more of these. And look, finally, on this part one of LinkedIn is. Getting recommendations, and this is a, a, a rip-off from when we used to get like a written recommendation uh, when we'd apply for a job 15 years ago, but LinkedIn's taken it to the next level, I'd argue, because you can exactly see who's given that recommendation, so you know if it's someone credible or someone um, who, who might be your mum or something, so making sure that you've got someone credible there, and all you need is three to five of these, and it will really make your profile stand out. So. So that is part one of LinkedIn, and it's so so just like with a website, you'd always build a beautiful website before you attract lots of traffic there. And similar with LinkedIn, you build a great profile first. Um, and so the next thing, and what I'm going to argue, this is the absolute gold of LinkedIn, or the absolute primary part of LinkedIn, is this advanced search part of it. And so I might just go live, so just let me know if there's any screen issues. So I've just jumped into my own personal LinkedIn profile. I've just gone up to the search box at the top, and I've just typed in three letters, which is CEO. So if, if I'm a business in Canberra, um, or a regional entrepreneur, and I want to find all the different CEOs, so anybody who's called themselves a chief executive officer or CEO, and I can ISO. So I've typed that in, and I've just gone down to type in the location of Canberra, and so I've just done those two things, and pretty quickly, I've now got access to 1,168 CEOs that are based in Canberra. And so I can actually start to have a look through those. And if I was um, someone like Ben Vaughan, and I actually really wanted to do some more work um, 
uh, with the Australian National University, for example, so an education provider. I've now got um, people who are associated with ANU wow. so, and have called themselves a CEO. So we've got 11 results, so a pretty targeted list. Um, so we can go and look at look at that pretty pretty specifically and pretty quickly. Um, and each and every one of these, um, we can go and create this list however however we like. And so I might just change it so to be a director, for example. So let's just change it to people with a title of director. Um, and so people at ANU, um, so in Canberra, um, and have got the title director, there's 179 of those. Um, so there's a lot of people to kind of look through or work with and think about um, exactly those humans at ANU that might be interested um, in tours for students overseas, so educational tours, using that example of Ben. Um, mm. and, and so, yeah, is that all making sense so far, Jeremy? That's all good? It is, absolutely. Si, do you have any questions at this stage? Or are there any coming through from our crowd, our audience? <coughs> None from the crowd yet. Um, so please, folks, if you've got questions specific with LinkedIn, just let us know, just fire them up. But Colin, um, if I'm a plumber or a tradesman, because you mentioned before that my ideal client might want to be a director or a CEO or someone with that sort of the C-suite title, um, if I'm a plumber or if I'm an occupational therapist or if I'm a, um, you know, not someone that necessarily deals with this exact target audience, how might I pick up LinkedIn and go, here's an opportunity for me to jump in and do some interesting stuff? What, what, how would I use it? Yeah, look, let's take the exact example of a plumber. There are two ways to look at that size. So number one is I would be looking at any target audiences that I do have in that professional space. So if I was a plumber and I was looking to get into more commercial facilities or to apartment blocks or into corporate premises or government, I would absolutely be going to search on facility managers and building managers and this kind of thing. Um, so if I, yeah, yeah that, that is absolutely it. So I, and I'd be, and I'll show you exactly what we'd do with them once we find those kind of people. So I would definitely go and contact uh, them. So look at any target audience. And so for a plumber, they might need suppliers. So I'd look at any suppliers I might need. I'd definitely look at new staff, but primarily I'd be looking at those prospects. And look, part two is that e e even in the world of plumbing, which might not be perceived to be um, that social media and digital kinds of things are, are as important, but you know, there's, there's, a, there's a great example in Canberra of a gentleman from Watertight Plumbing and what he's done is he's building a really strong personal brand um, about being the on-time um, and on-budget plumber in Canberra. And so he's really using those social media channels to talk about what decisions to make and which plumbers to use and what to expect and that kind of thing. So he's really using it as a platform or a place where he can publish content uh, to get known in that space. So it's really those two areas. So one is kind of prospects or people you need to speak with, and number two is that brand. Mm. That makes sense, yeah. So why, yeah. why LinkedIn over Facebook or Insta for that sort of content, or could I multi, could I use one bit of content across multiple platforms? And it's slightly off cuff, but I'm just wondering why LinkedIn? <coughs> yeah, look, look, it's actually a really good question and, and look, I would always respond to that, uh, um, to never be romantic about the channels you use. So, you know, you and I might hate getting letters in the mail, um, but we love LinkedIn, but if letters in the mail work, that's the one we do. Um, and so if I was a plumber site and I was targeting mums and dads, um, look, I would be a lot more likely uh, to use Facebook and Instagram to hit that audience, if that's my dream audience. So I'd really think about that. But in most cases, you'd you'd um, you know create a great video, or create a great article, and then distribute that through each of the channels. And using the so LinkedIn is a bit more like a boardroom, and Facebook is a bit more like a barbecue. So that that's the kind of conversation <laughs> style you'd have in those two platforms. But um, but it really is horses for courses, and, and LinkedIn will not be for everyone. Um, but it has a really strong place for many. I'd imagine the content piece that you mentioned is important and a lot of small businesses might not be thinking about that enough, Cole, where if I'm a builder and someone builds their house or an investment property once every seven or eight years, 
there's also that need to play the long game and, and these platforms, especially LinkedIn, allow us to publish articles and content that give us credibility so when that GP or that architect that is my ideal client as a builder wants to build and they're searching for reputable builders in Canberra or Wagga or Barrel that they can see that your profile in these platforms looks more credible than the others. Is that a fair observation? Absolutely. And so, and so LinkedIn is is indexing very highly in Google. So if I go and type Plumber Canberra or Plumber Goulburn, for example, into Google, the LinkedIn profiles of the organisation and the individual will definitely come up. And so it will really help you get in found. And often, you know, I refer to this as the zero moment of truth, which is a big concept pushed by Google at the moment, which is, you know, when there's a, an explosion of water in your house, you know, you need to call a plumber quickly, you pick up your mobile, you type into Google, you know, plumber Goulburn, and the first result is probably the one you'll call. Um, so, so it's this moment of decision where, um, where you want to be found and LinkedIn, the core component of that. Okay, thank you, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no worries. And we'll get on to content in a moment. So I might just follow through. So um, look, I'll just continue with, with the Ben example, if that's fine. Um, so, so look, I found this 179 results at ANU, and I found a gentleman here um, So who would be of interest. So he looks at le um, engaged learning for students, so Vin Lu. So what I'd always do, I would go and research this specific individual, so this audience of one. I'd go and see if we've got mutual connections. So we've got 94 mutual connections. Um, so a lot of different people we've got in common. I'd look at the kind of content he posts. I would check out his background. So I'd go and do, um, I'm going to call it research, but it's really stalking. Uh, so I'd go and investigate exactly as much as I could about Vin. Um, and then what I would do in, on every occasion is I'd actually send a connection request. And so, um, so if I find, so let's go and find somebody who I'm not connected with. So let's find, um, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So once we find the right person, um, this is how I'll connect with them. So if I find um, Peter Murphy, for example, so I'd go and research Peter Murphy, and then what I actually do is press the connect button. Um, and so instead of just pressing send now, I'd always add a nice personal note. And so I've used an example of a personal note here of what I might send to someone like, um, so someone like uh, Peter Murphy. So what, so what I might do is go in and actually write something. So hi Peter, I hope you're well. I, I noticed you're um, uh, in marketing at this organisation. I also noticed we're connected to these people, so I'd put the exact right names in there. Um, and I would definitely write that I work with um, 42 Adventures. Um, and, so, and I'd give a bit of a value proposition for exactly what I do, and I'd go regard Ben, um, and I'd absolutely put my mobile number in there. So, um, and then I'd send that invitation off to that individual. So I would just start with that kind of approach. Um, and in the pack I'm going to give to you, I've just brought that pack back up. Um, I would absolutely, um, yeah, start start to use that kind of approach, and I wouldn't start trying to tee up a copy or anything further at that point. Uh, I'll just send that note to them. So, so that is, um, so, and just to finish off on part two, so part one was build your profile, part two is find these wonderful prospects. Um, and just to finish off part two, there's actually a phenomenal function in LinkedIn where you can actually go and download all of your connections. So you can see these are just a portion of the ones I've got, so, and you can download everyone you're connected to on LinkedIn. So you can get their first name, last name, email address um, and their company and job title. So I'll just show you exactly how to do that. If you haven't done that before, I absolutely recommend you do it. So you actually just come into settings and privacy um, and then under account, it's just down under get in an archive of your data and you just request archive under fast file only and you actually get a really nice um, a list of all the uh, of all your connections on LinkedIn. So you'll have their email address and details. And so something that you want to keep, because this is really like your modern day Rolodex. Uh, so it's, it's absolutely something I recommend from today's session is to do that. So you just click and request I'll, archive and, and yeah. Is it, is it okay then to incorporate that into your CRM 
outside LinkedIn and, and include them in your newsletter or whatever else you do um, outside this platform? Yeah, look, what I would look, the answer to that is no, until you have consent to do that, so opt-in consent. So what you can do is one-to-one -one email them. So Ben could email Vin Lu, who we found, and said, um, and you know, talk further about catching up and where there might be a common interest. Um, but to add them to your CRM, so you can add them to your CRM, but I wouldn't opt them in as yet until you've kind of gone out and said, is it okay for me to send you communication? Um, that it, it's getting quite grey, but that that's the current interpretation of the spam act. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, but look, if you haven't done it already, absolutely go and export your LinkedIn connections. Um, and look, I just want to jump on to part three, and then absolutely happen happy to open to any questions. So, part three is exactly what uh, uh, Jeremy was talking about: is is this content marketing side. And so this is absolutely where you can you know, both create that brand and persona in the eyes of these exact target audience you've just built. So if Ben goes and connects with that gentleman, Vin Lu from ANU, everything he posts from now on will be seen by Vin, will be sent out. And roughly about 35% of your content will be seen per contact, that's the uh, per connection, that's what LinkedIn released. So, um, and I'll just give you, like, so Jeremy, you asked this question as well, and, and Sai, you talked on this point, is about how you distribute content. And so I'll just put a bit of an example here, which is where I might, at the top, I might produce a video. The first thing I do with a video is put it on my website under the news or insights section. And because it's a video, I would also publish that on YouTube and Vimeo probably, so any, any platforms like that. And then from my website, I, I would actually look to distribute that content out through LinkedIn, through YouTube down the bottom, um, email, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I would look to promote that as much as I could through each of my relevant channels. So some of you might only have LinkedIn or you might only have Facebook, um, but I'd really want to um, you know, link back to that video on my website so people come and see it. So this is this is something that's really important that, that most organisations I work with don't. So that, so that some that do produce content don't drive eyeballs to it or don't drive traffic there. Um, <laughs> and so one of the big so one of the biggest problems I get is we don't know what to write about or we don't know what content to do. We don't have time to do to write content. And so these two slides are the top fifty topics. Um, so the twenty five per slide of exactly what's trending on particularly on LinkedIn, but on social media, about exactly what people want to hear. Uh, so not exactly what you want to write, but what people want to hear. So a couple of great examples here uh, for regional entrepreneurs. So um, the customer success stories are very popular. So when you deliver a great plumbing job site, um, take a photo of the customer, um, give a bit of a story and background and what you change, maybe the before and after. Um, the biggest myths in your industry is another big one. Um, and also what's a hard truth your customers need to hear. Um, and that's slide two, so there's a whole lot more topics there. And for some businesses, you might just choose one of these topics to write articles about all year, such as who is a customer you could profile or interview. And right now in the world of content, it is much better off doing one great piece of content, so a video about what you do or an article about the top 10 ways to find a plumber instead of going and producing 20 poor quality articles. Um, and I'll show you an article I've just put out as an example. So, uh, and, and I did put it out on LinkedIn, so I've just come back to LinkedIn Live. Um, and so I'll just come to my profile. And so something I was doing in my business and something I'm looking to do is to attract talent to my business. And so I've written this article. And so what I was actually doing, I was writing the employment contracts um, for my business, and I looked at a lot of the templates and things out there, and I didn't love them. And so I wrote an article on LinkedIn, and I actually published my um, employment contract. And it was, it's a little bit of a play on words, or a little bit tongue in cheek kind of approach. Um, and so this kind of, which is, I've written, I'll listen to you, you listen to me. So kind of more of a relationship contract versus a legal contract. And so it's got 111 likes, it's got nine comments, it's got 13 shares, and I just published this two days ago. 
Um, and it's telling me, I think it's up to 500 clicks. Um, so at 670 clicks as of this morning. So, um, and this article, I'll just come back to the article, sorry. Um, so it took me about 10 minutes to write. Um, so I just said, yep, I decided to write, write this because I didn't love what was out there. Um, and a whole lot of people on LinkedIn gave me suggestions, so I just added their suggestions to it and finished with, could it work in your organisation? So what I'm trying to do is position myself as somebody now, or an organisation that people would love to come and work for. So yeah, so I thought that was quite a nice example. It's going going quite well. Nice one. I'm, I'm just looking. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's a it, it's a little. Um, so that that was my intention and why I did it. So yeah, so it's an interesting one. And look, I'm just going to continue on with the content side, and I'll leave some time for um, for questions. Is that you do not always need to write your own content. So there's all these amazing organisations out there, including Canberra Times, the Australian Forbes, or might be Plumbers Weekly, or you know whatever it is your publication in your industry. You can absolutely share content from groups that have already putting content out there. And the best way to do that is to use Google Alerts. So just set up a free Google Alert on exactly what it is you're a specialist at. So it might be the word plumbing or plumber, and you'll get an email of all the best videos, content, articles produced around the planet on that topic. Um, and look, just finally, um, is that via LinkedIn, so what, what I would recommend you do, so this is an approach I recommend, is that once we've built our profile as part one, Part two was going and finding all those educational leaders in Canberra for someone like Ben, so finding your ideal prospects. And then part three was, this is after probably a minimum of two weeks, but I generally wait six to eight weeks. And I would send them a note, something like this that you got up on your screen via LinkedIn. And so I'll show you how to do that. Um, is so if I take that note and I'm in LinkedIn, um, and so I've been connected to Vin for a period of time. This is the kind of note I might write to Vin to actually tee up that coffee or to actually go and talk about educational tours. So if, if so I've got Vin here, so we're now a first degree connection. I would just go and press this message button right here in the middle. And so it's just popped up here. Oh, and so I can write yeah. up here. Say again. Say again. Now go on, Tom. So, yeah, so, so the, yeah, so the, I've just pressed yeah, the message button right, right here in the middle. Right here in the middle. And so what we can do is, is we can post, do is paste it down, down the bottom for a note. Um, and so I would, um, and so I would have to mind that. that. Um, and write something um, like this. Right so I hope you're like well. We can connect you're well. We can connect you in a period of time. Period of time. I would generally Google um and um, definitely write something about them. So I saw your recent promotion to director at ANU. Um, so I'll put that there um, because that's what uh, that's what happened with Vin. Not sure if you're aware, but I work for Forty Two Adventures, um, and we're specialists in adventure tours, in educational tours for students. Um, so I was wondering whether you'd be interested in meeting for a coffee. Um, look forward to your thoughts. Best regards, Ben. Um, and I would send a note like that. Um, so I'll just bring up the full copy here for you. Um, so a note, something along those lines, so nicely personalised, so a premium note, and look with what the intention of teeing up a coffee or a meeting or a lunch or whatever it might be appropriate, or a Skype call or a phone call um, in your industry. And so this is precisely how I'd start generating leads and business from LinkedIn, going through these three stages. So, and I just mm. want to. Um, yeah, and it, that, that's all we can say for there, Derry. Absolutely, it is. What's amazing is that this wasn't available only you know six years ago, and now the fact you can go online and search and research and reach out and make a connection, and then even a a rapport building request like that um, of someone who's a real influencer or a, a really significant client. Um, this is just so much powerful than that that has been available to us before and my prediction is that none of us really are using it to its potential. Um, so my question is more to the listeners. Um, how many ideal potential clients can you reach out to and make a direct 
connection with and invite to a coffee um, through this platform with these tools that Cole's sharing with us. This is fantastic, Cole, and you're making um, it really clear about how we can really simply do that sort of sniping effort and, and reach out and connect with someone directly. So thank you. Yeah, oh, look, absolute pleasure. And look, you're spot on. This kind of thing has not really been available, to be honest. But, you know, the hardest thing always with, with organisations and your businesses is that deciding exactly who your ideal or prospective clients are. Once you know that it is lecturers at ANU, I absolutely recommend LinkedIn to find these. But I just, I just call it hustle, which is where I go and Google them. I use Twitter, I use Facebook, I use LinkedIn, I use Yellow Pages, I use the ANU website to go and look for a list of all their lecturers. I, I use everything at my disposal um, to, to go and find these humans I'm after. And so, so, so businesses um, who are in that B2B space or are looking for B2B contacts, LinkedIn is often my first go-to. It's where I'd start because I don't yet know these people's names or even know that they exist. So I'd go and identify that it was this gentleman, Vin Lu, was one of my prospects. And then I'd go and just absolutely hustle and learn everything I can about them and then make a really nice approach or contact with them. So, And for some people, it might be a phone call or it might be an email or LinkedIn is a really nice, more passive way than giving them a direct phone call or knocking on their door, which is how things used to be done. Yep. Yeah. Paul, um, the, the other point that is really coming through for me is as business owners and leaders, so many of our clients are stuck in operations where they're doing the technical part of their business. And what you're highlighting here is that it's just so important that we leverage ourselves out of the technical so that we can focus on being the, the lead generator and the business developer and the um, front and face of our businesses. And I'm sure for those listening that, um, I guess we encourage those listening that this is your responsibility as business owner to be the front man and to get out and create these connections and to be having these meetings and let's get the team doing some of the more routine tasks so that you can be leveraged to do this. Yeah, look, absolutely. I, and I think it's a really nice, it, though it might feel a little bit tactical and parts of it is, that, that kind of strategic view of who you'd like to be your next customer to be. So in size example, if you're you know, dealing with lots of small residential quick piecemeal jobs as a plumber that would like to push into doing nursing homes, the plumbing there, or hospitals or office buildings, um, this is a great way to break those chains and, and step into the, the, the arena you'd like to be in. Uh, and that's where many of my clients or organisations want to move to, to really craft their ideal audience versus just taking what they get, if that makes sense. Yep. Yep. Great. Now, Cole, I'm mindful of time. Um, how are we going? Would you like to move into a another theme? Well, I've got a question. Yeah, look, look, sure. I've got a question, Cole, and it comes back to one of your comments you made about the quality of the content you're putting up there. And I, I go back to Gary Vaynerchuk when he first started. You can actually YouTube or get Google his first ever video he did. No lighting. Yeah. Sound quality pretty piss poor, um, but he got the message and he got started. So when, when I encourage people to create content, I get them to selfie themselves on a on a on a selfie stick, and uh, we have one the other day with a butcher showing us how to sharpen a knife. Just building a relationship with his people, and and my question, I guess, goes back to: Do I have to worry about auto prompters and three point lighting and expensive microphones, or can I just get something out there? And people will connect with me because I'm being authentic, rather than you know number one professional. What's your thoughts on that when, when creating content? Yeah, such a good question. So this is a really good clarification. So look, I agree wholeheartedly with you, Sai, in terms of just getting started and just getting starting with one piece and getting it out there. And you're spot on that long ago did it matter? It stopped mattering about 
really high quality lighting and imagery and those kind of things and makeup and hair. You probably don't need that anyway, so. Um, but, so but, but filming it on a mobile or taking a, sh a selfie on an iPhone is absolutely fine now. So when I, when, so you, you're spot on. And so when I talked about quality, so I, I threw in a comment saying instead of doing 20 poor quality pieces, do one good quality piece. What I should have clarified there was saying it's really important to make sure it, it is something that will hit, be good for your target audience. It's something that's useful and relevant and, you know, so I gave that example of a butcher where it builds a relationship with your audience. So it's really worth putting a bit of thought in versus just putting up, you know, a random quote you found from Gandhi and just expecting that to just fly. Um, yeah. It's really important you put that thought in and to just put a bit more um, effort in. But the, the quality of the assets in terms of, you know, the resolution and those kind of things, you do not need to spend a lot of money. Um, so yeah, so I hope, hope that makes sense. But yeah, you're spot on. Yeah, it's a really the, good the question. Second, yeah. second part of that comment would be: Is it okay to give away intellectual property? In some way, what you're doing today as well—you're giving away intellectual property, which is going to make people want to know more about what you do. Is that is that okay? Absolutely. Look, I, I'm a huge fan of, of doing that, and I give away everything because I'm just. It really drives me to be the best, keep researching, keep being on top of the latest trends and mm -hmm. just knowing that at some point if somebody took all my stuff, they could know everything I know, but I would have progressed six months by that time or 12 months. So look, it's a really good point and you know, some parts of IP, you know, small parts you might want to keep like Colonel Sanders' 11 Secret Herbs and Spices, that's critical. Um, but you know, but other, but other you know many of the other parts in a business you know absolutely share it with the world to prove you're that expert. Mm. Which which could be a great place to start if people are on the call wondering what do I do, then you know mm. if you understand your target market and can create a bit of content whether it's a thirty second video or a you know as you've just done a kind of open source what what do you think about this as an engagement letter then then yeah that's a great way for people just to get started and get producing yeah ab absolutely yeah and and to hopefully motivate and inspire those on the call so just just the final thing i wanted to share so just one point was that from doing hundreds if not thousands of these types of programs on linkedin and other channels but focus on linkedin is that if you go out and connect with your target audience with a great LinkedIn profile, 50 to 60 percent of those people will connect with you. But secondly, if you connect with if you connect with a hundred of these connections, so these exact building managers or facility managers if you're a plumber, 67% um, will respond um, and either say yes, that'd be great, let's catch up. Others will say thanks, but no thanks. Others will say I'm not the right person, here's the right person. Um, and so, the, so on average, we get between thirty to forty percent um, of these people accept and definitely turn up to that meeting. And these are very qualified, very engaged people who know exactly what they're there to talk about. Um, and off the back of that, I've seen very high conversion rates, so well above fifty to sixty percent, depending on the product. So yeah, so hopefully that inspires people to take some action, give it a go, and get out there. That's a really significant point where in other social media channels and cold calling and you, the conversion rates are far lower but the response rate um, to meeting is really significant in LinkedIn. That's, that's, that's significant and I can relate to that. I've had that experience. People do respond, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. Look, it really is high. So, if you think, so when email marketing first kind of came of age back in ninety nine, two thousand, everyone's like, "Oh my goodness, I got an email. It's amazing." Um, whereas now, when you get an email, it's you know, it's not that great. Or someone knocks on your door, or you get a telemarketing call at dinner time. Whereas LinkedIn is very new, and that that tarnish or uh, will come off. Like it will, uh, sorry, it will tarnish over time. Um, so yes, yeah, so it's a really good window of opportunity right now to use this channel and use it respectfully to, to get more clients for sure. Great. Any final yeah. questions, Si, or I've from the crowd? I've got none on the crowd, so I'm going to assume that um, they're a little bit like me right now. I, I, my, my mouse or trackpad thing is itching to start surfing through LinkedIn and find those ideal candidates. Hmm. 
Yeah. And so, Cole, thank you so much. It's been great, again, to have you sort of engaged with us and speaking to our clients. And um, Keen, if you would, just to, how, how does someone get started? What are, the, what are the sort of first three things that I have to do if, for whatever reason, my um, LinkedIn profile isn't where it needs to be so that I can get started? Yeah, look, absolutely. the three absolute criticals for me. So number one is get the slides from this webinar so they're all available to you. Number two is absolutely set up your LinkedIn profile. So I went through just the seven elements that you should have in place to have a strong LinkedIn profile. And number three is absolutely get out there and just start that ball rolling, connecting with your perfect clients. They are the first three steps for sure. Um, and then that next part will be to launch into that content side and start producing great things for your prospects. Yeah. Wonderful, Cole. Thank you. Um, great to have you involved again, mate. Thanks so much for your time and for your support to the Academy and, and to us. We very much appreciate it. Thanks, Cole. Yeah, ab absolute pleasure. Thanks so much, gentlemen, and um, we'll talk in the future. Thanks a lot. Great, guys. Take care. Thanks, and have a great week, everyone. We'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.